teams that play different styles, two teams with different postseason backgrounds. Lynchburg has never made it to the ODAC championship game in women's basketball. Randolph-Macon has won seven titles, six of those coming between 2003 and 2011. The Yellow Jackets, a run-and-gun team, leading the conference 88.4 points per game, nearly 15 more points a contest than any other team scored. On the other end, giving up more points than anybody. You've seen a lot of crazy scores, 115-92, 110-93, 105-81, 104-90 to when the Yellow Jackets have taken the floor this year. 96-91 to win over Bridgewater in the quarterfinals on Thursday. Much tougher game than they would have thought, that I would have thought going into that Bridgewater game. Bridgewater got hot from the outside, was able to get some open looks, knock down some shots, and stay close. But in the end, the offensive outburst, the stretches, the the, the runs that randolph Macon's capable of put together just too much for the eagles on thursday lynchburg college got here by surviving number six roanoke 68 to 64 the hornets uh, led by first team all odak picks shannon allen 14.8 points per game but cheney forbush such a presence on the inside we saw charmaine hairston have a big game on the outside for the hornets and again in addition to forbush and allen who's a six foot wing they come out after you with wave after wave of tall and athletic post players whether it's lauren pinley or kaylee patterson or jamie grace coming in off the bench when they can run five six footers at you and that's eventually what wore down roanoke roanoke a little undersized this season got worn down by that size inside. Forbush, so big, so strong. She and Allen both had two big games against Randolph-Macon because Randolph-Macon just doesn't have anybody in the interior to match up. So if, Rand if Lynchburg can take care of the basketball, not turn it over and allow Randolph-Macon to get in transition, they can take advantage of that size inside and just punish the Yellow Jackets in the paint. Taylor Huber, Division I transfer from Utah Valley University but from the Richmond area, 22 points per game. First team all ODAC pick. She scored 32 in the loss to Lynchburg, 76-74 in January, then 23 in a 91-73 randolph Macon win. You've got Sarah Parsons averaging close to 18 points per game. But the big difference between the Lynchburg win and the randolph Macon win was the play of Katie Anderson. Second team all ODAC selection, as was Parsons, averaging 15.9 points, 9.8 rebounds, when uh, the Yellow Jackets lost to the Hornets, she had seven points and nine boards. When they won in Ashland a few weeks later, 24 points and 14 rebounds, and she had a big game against Bridgewater two days ago. Well, she carried them on Thursday. Huber and Parsons, neither one really playing a very efficient game. They both got their points, but it took a lot of shots to get it. Not very efficient. She had a nice double-double. That carried them on Thursday, and she's going to be the key for the Yellow Jackets here today. She's going to have to, at 5'11", bang around with those six-footers she has got to stay out of foul trouble because they have to have her on the floor for 30-plus minutes here this afternoon if they're going to beat Lynchburg College. Randolph making it 21-5, and 13-3 and in the ODAC. A bounce-back year after the rough 2012-2013. The, the Yellow Jackets used to being here for Saturday, if not Sunday, of the ODAC tournament and uh, only a one-year hiatus in terms of having success against the rest of the league. Well, when you've got those three offensive players that they have, and we're talking about Parsons, Hubert, and Anderson, they're going to make you better in a hurry. Sarah Parsons showed flashes last year, even though they had a damn year, that she was going to be one of the better guards in the ODAC. Huber came along, Division I transfer, like you mentioned. She can put points on the board. And then Anderson, such a tough matchup. So it didn't take them long to right the ship. But Coach LaHaye, she mentioned it on Thursday to some people we were around in a group. Not one of her better defensive teams. Kind of frustrates her that they're not able to get the stops when they need to. They've kind of had to outscore people, but they've done a great job of it so far this season. Meanwhile, Lynchburg College for fourth-year head coach Abby Pizik, who has won a NODAC championship as a coach. She was the assistant for Mandy King on the 2010 Washington and Lee championship team. You knew I was going to throw that in at some point. They've gotten better and better every single season. Got to the semifinals which is the furthest they've ever been last year. Tough loss in overtime to Eastern Mennonite. Now trying to take that next step and get to the conference championship. Well, and it's been Shannon Allen. Shannon Allen, her first year came in, had one of the worst games of her season. Uh, her first year campaign, which was one of the best in the ODAC that year, came in, had a rough tournament. They lost in the first round. Last year, she played much better, much more composed. They were able to make it to the second round. And now to see if her third try, she can get Lynchburg to their first final ever. We saw Carol LaHay and Abby Pizik very lighthearted exchange at midcourt as Randolph Macon and Lynchburg square off here in the semifinals. Guilford College awaits. The Quakers have won the last two ODAC titles 
And they were the fourth seed coming in, but knocked off number one, Eastern Midnight 61 to 54 earlier today. Starting lineups first for Lynchburg, Sammy Goldsmith, Katie Reeves, Cheney Forbush, Shannon Allen, and Lauren Pinley. And for the Yellow Jackets, Sarah Parsons, Taylor Huber, Katie Anderson, Kajay Hester, and Paige Mills. Tempo, keyword for this game. Well, it really is. If, if Randolph Bay can, can turn the Lynchburg guards over, most important people may be Reeves and Ann Thoris off the bench, as well as Harrison that you mentioned. They've got to be able to take care of the basketball, make good decisions, and get Lynchburg into their half-court sets. If they turn it over and allow Randolph Macon to get out and force that issue, push the tempo, then Randolph Macon's going to have a huge advantage. If the Lynchburg guards can take care of the basketball, let their post players play a half-court game, they'll have a chance to control the rhythm. They want to keep the points lower. Randolph Macon wants to get it up, up and down the floor. Let's see what happens. Anderson and Forbush on the tip. The Hornets in black will have the first possession. Randolph Macon in white, glad to have you along on ODAC.TV. The second women's semifinal, the two men's final four games to come later this evening. Man-to-man -man defense for Randolph Macon, the Yellow Jackets are susceptible on the half court. The first look for Pinley. Anderson defending, but Pinley keeps the rebound alive. And Pinley needs to have a much better game. She was non-existent for them on Thursday in the Roanoke win. She needs to have a bigger game, especially if she can take it to Anderson, maybe pick up a couple of fouls early. Taylor Huber missing the layup attempt. The rebound knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Randolph Macon. Right there, Lynchburg College. Used their size, got a layup attempt, missed it, got an offensive rebound, missed a point blank shot. They're going to need to make those because Randolph Macon can score points in bunches. Huber, no good on the three. Anderson and Pinley take each other out in the rebound, four on four. Here come the other two. Goldsmith gets to the rim but misses the layup. Pinley a second chance, that's blocked. The Hornets will kick things back out front to Reeves. Goldsmith came in her first year, had a really solid offensive performance, has struggled a little bit this season to find her rhythm in this offense. Three ball rims out. Goldsmith scores six and a half a game, but also leads Lynchburg with 4.1 assists per contest. And no score, well over a minute in. Unusual for a game involving Randolph Macon this season. Hester on the attack. Reeves read that pass well, knocks it out with the shot clock at 11. Nice job. Hester did a good job getting past her defender, but when you go in there amongst the trees, it's going to be tough for Hester to finish that with a basket. Parsons gets underneath the rim. Allen blocked the first one, but Parsons fouled on the second chance. And the smallest player on the floor. Well, maybe that's not true. Kajay Hester and Sarah Parsons, a Small backcourt, certainly big contributions for the Yellow Jackets. Parsons will shoot two. And right there, that was huge. Parsons showing no fear, went right between Forbush and Allen. Not only got the first shot, then out battled the two six-footers to get the rebound, and now she got the foul, and that's the first on Forbush. Lynchburg was a different team, not quite as effective on Thursday against Rona College when Forbush had to sit on the bench with battling foul trouble. Parsons, a shade under 80% at the line this year, goes one for two. Randolph Macon gets to the line a lot, 31 attempts per game. The Jackets were 32 of 42 in the quarterfinals. And that's because they attack, attack, attack. As soon as they get off the bus into the arena, they're ready to go, pushing the ball up and down the floor. One to nothing lead for Randolph Macon, looking for the game's first field goal. Not going to come for the Jackets here as Pinley takes the ball away from Hester. Goldsmith leading Shannon Allen. Basket no good, and the rebound controlled by Paige Mills. And Lynchburg getting exactly what they want in the early going. A lot of shots inside using their size, just haven't been able to see one go in yet. Huber on the drive, draws a foul. And she's such a good three-point shooter, you have to close out to her. She was able to get Goldsmith on her hip, and once she did, the experience, the veteran player that she is, she just went all the way to the hole, drew the foul, and now she's going to get a chance to score her first points of the afternoon. Huber from Ashland, going across the country to start her career, playing well at Utah Valley, but coming back home and has had an immediate impact on this Yellow Jacket team. 
Well, she's a huge difference for him. She's a 5'8 guard that can take you to the basket. She's got unlimited range. She can shoot at five, six feet behind the three-point line, and she gets her shot off very regularly during any game. A little bit tight on the free throws, though, and it remains one to nothing. Charmaine Hairston is in the ball game. Big first half against Roanoke, and Forbush everything but the layup there. Second chance, Mills blocks, but a whistle and a foul. And Forbush did exactly what Lynchburg needs to do. They got it inside. She missed the first shot, but she went after it. She let Parsons beat her for a rebound earlier in the game. Not going to happen very often. She was able to get the easy rebound and then attacked Paige Mills to get to the free throw line. Forbush is 75% free throw shooter. Gets the Hornets on the board. Both teams look a little bit tight here in the early going. And they are, and that's, that's something that Lynchburg, you wanted to get off to that hot start, establish yourself inside. They have been able to establish the fact they can get it inside, but right now with the shots that they've been getting in the first half, they should have about a six or eight point lead. And when you look up and you're only up one with the firepower that Randolph-Macon has, you've got to be worried. Huber misses the three. Yellow Jackets keep the rebound alive. Mills behind the defense, and Allen hits her on the arm. Uncharacteristically, Lynchburg with all that size struggling right now, already giving up three offensive rebounds to a smaller Randolph-Macon team. And you can't see that if you're Coach Pizek. You've got to clean that up. If you get Randolph-Macon College to miss, you've got to finish the possession by securing the defensive rebound. And that's why she's going to take the time out and talk to them about that right now. So a stoppage with just over 17 minutes to go. Neither team has hit a field goal. Paige Mills will have a chance to give Randolph-Macon the lead. Mills, the lone senior on Carol LaHaye's roster, in there for leadership and experience. Any scoring you get from her is a bonus. Well, anything you get. She's going to beat, she's going to bang. She'll get you a few rebounds, maybe block a shot here and there. But she's just out there surely because they have to have a six-footer against the size of Lynchburg. She's going to have to go out there and battle as hard as she can. Unfortunately for Mills, the biggest problem she's had over her career is picking up fouls, isn't able to sustain long runs out there on the floor. And we've seen the Hornets getting the ball inside, but just not able to get the shots to go early on here. And that's what you want. I mean, you want to be able to get the ball inside. You want to be able to try and get some offensive rebounds. We just watched the game in that first semifinal game where the offensive rebounds were so crucial for Guilford in building and maintaining their lead. So Mills splits the pair, tied at two. And again, still looking for our first made basket. Nothing from the floor for either team so far. Kaylee Patterson in there, number 45 in black. This Reeves guarded by Hester Huber jumps the passing lane. And I know it's not what you want to see all the time, but she's going to have to take that three-point shot to open up the offense. Right there, she telegraphed that pass. Huber knew exactly where she was going to Allen in the corner and was able to get a hand on that amount. 10 on the shot clock. Huber, take away from Allen. And that's a mismatch right there. You would think because of the size of Allen that she would have a huge advantage. What we did at Hollins the last two years is we took Jasmine Green and put her on Shannon Allen. Allen averaged about seven points a game against Hollins in their four games over the last two seasons because she's such a good spot-up shooter. You put a quicker player on her, she's not able to put the ball on the floor like you saw on that possession. Hustle play from Hairston broke up the transition layup and Hairston defending again as Huber misses off the inbounds pass. But she gets another steal. This time it's Reeves giving chase and Huber able to convert. And that's exactly what we said in the opening. You cannot turn the ball over if you're the Lynchburg guards. And that was two bad passes in a row that led to Huber having chances to score. And she finally broke through for the first field goal of the afternoon. Takes nearly four minutes for a team averaging 88 points per game. But so far the Hornets have yet to scratch. Hairston way off the mark with a jump shot. And the Hornets, I think, after those early misses, looking out of sorts on the offensive end. They really are. They're out of sync. She's made some substitutions. She's got three subs in there right now, trying to change up the rhythm, trying to change up the, ro the rotation. And of course, I'm talking about Coach Pizek right now, and now Randolph-Macon. They've gone to their bench because they want to keep the pressure on you the whole game and make this as up-tempo as they can. Anderson, the only starter who stays out there. Kelly Cortina going inside to Lauren Vugtavine. Layup no good. The other two Yellow Jackets subs, Hannah Liverman and Marisha Berry. And 
Liverman can really stretch the floor, an excellent three-point shooter. So you've got her out there with Huber's ability to penetrate. He gives you a nice one-two punch right now for Randolph Macon. And the foul on the outside on the Yellow Jackets going against Kelly Cortina. Also, Yellow Jackets number five, Kelly Cortina, her first, second team foul. Four and a half minutes five. in, two-point Yellow Jacket lead Lynchburg. Yet to scratch from the field, just the two early free throws for Forbush who gets it on the inside. And there is the first bucket for Lynchburg. And, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to isolate her inside. Whether you go high-low and put your other post player at the high post, or whether you bring Allen in and run her at the, at the power forward spot and pull her outside the three-point line, because they have no answer for Forbush on the interior. There's Liverman trying the three, too strong, and now the Hornets have numbers. Reeves, good pass for Hairston. She's fouled in transition. This is huge for Lynchburg right now. You've got Randolph Macon. Talked about Lynchburg being out of sorts in the half court. Randolph Macon not able to get out in transition like they like to. You would like to, if you're Coach Plasic, be able to build a little lead because you know the Randolph Macon, the first run's coming, and it's probably coming soon. Hairston averaging 10.1 points per game off the bench. The freshman from Franklin County High School in Rocky Mount. Yellow Jacket foul there was the first on Liverman. Hairston hits the free throws, and Lynchburg has the lead. And Hairston was huge. Double figures off the bench on Thursday against Roanoke really gave them that scoring punch they needed with Forbush being in foul trouble. And Doris is checked in at the point guard spot. Barry around his screen, fires up the three, no good. Offensive rebound for Cortina, new 32nd clock for the Yellow Jackets. No Parsons, no Huber, no Anderson right now. All subs as Stephanie Staples has come in. And that's what you're talking about, Hannah Liverman from outside the arc. Very rarely are you going to see her even take any attempts inside the arc. She is going to go from corner to corner outside that three-point arc. And if you give her space, she doesn't need much, like you saw right there, to knock down threes. Katie Reeves with a big answer for the Hornets. And that's continuing a huge tournament. She had a great game knocking down three-pointers on Thursday. And if she can stay hot from the outside, that's going to be a huge added weapon for the Hornets. The Yellow Jackets trying to push the pace. They turn it over. Back to Lynchburg with a 9-7 lead as we approach the 14-minute mark here at the Salem Civic Center. Coach LaHaye, her second team in the game right now, really just to go out there, push the tempo as much as they can, get those starters calmed down so that when they come back for their second rotation, maybe they can make a run. Hairston sets up Forbush for the layup. Forbush, six points already. She's made a couple free throws. She's knocked down some shots inside. She's going to be the toughest matchup that Randolph Macon has all afternoon long. So the offense is starting to find their groove. Liverman not able to make it two threes in a row. A jump ball, held ball whistle on the rebound. 13 and 13, Hairston and Vugtavine. Nice job by Hairston right there. Giving up a lot of size, was able to reach in when the ball came down below the waist. Was able to reach in, tie it up. Possession will go though to the, horn, to the excuse me, Yellow Jackets. Parsons and Huber coming back in the game. Huber, a deep three, off the mark. Buck Tavine hustles down the rebound. Parsons will try from the outside, and she hits. Two straight offensive rebounds by Buck Tavine led to that three-point attempt that make by Parsons. And you don't want to see Sarah Parsons get going because when she makes one, she'll make four or five in a row. Pinley sets the screen. Hairston off the dribble, an air ball. And out of bounds back to Randolph making one point game just over seven minutes in. That was the shot that she hit so well on Thursday. Unable to connect so far on two outside shots has been Hairston. So Marisha Berry, the first year point guard, getting a look with the big three, Anderson, Huber, and Parsons. Buck Tavine still out there for Randolph making. Katie Anderson with her first points. That's a tough move right there, 5'11". She is such a good penetrator. Maybe the best penetrator that we have in the ODAC as far as taking it to the basket and having a wide variety of finishing moves like you saw right there. Reeves looking for another three, won't go. And we've got a Lynchburg foul on the rebound. 
And you've got to worry about it. If you take those long threes and don't get a look inside, those long rebounds can lead to some easy uh, breakout opportunities for Randolph Macon. First foul on Lauren Pinley. Sammy Goldsmith and Shannon Allen back in for the Hornets. They'll play with Pinley, Patterson, and Doris. So the Hornets go big. Parsons off the dribble. Looked like it was well defended by Goldsmith. The shot goes in nonetheless. Like I said, she's a, she's a scorer. When she sees the ball go through the basket, her eyes just light up. That was a shot right there. Not a very high percentage shot, but she's going to knock those down, especially when she's in the flow of the game. The Hornets turned it over. Pat Parsons not ter tremendously effective in uh, either regular season meeting against Lynchburg. Huber had the big game both times. As we mentioned, the difference in the loss versus the win was the play of Katie Anderson. And averaging 18 points per game. And certainly with the way her backcourt made Huber can stretch out an opposing defense. Lots of difficult matchups. Huber got open around the screen, and that's her first hit from outside. That was a really heady play by Parson. She lost the handle, tipped it to Huber, saw Huber's defender kind of just stayed right in the way, set a screen for her, and Huber was able to bury the three straight on. Yellow Jacket lead is out to six. And this is one of those Randolph making runs, 10 straight points for the number two seed. And that's what they're capable of doing. You'll see this numerous times through the game. You'll see a 6, 8, 10 point run by Randolph Macon. That's their game. They love to get it out in transition. And you've got to be able to knock one down to stop these runs. If not, game can get out of reach in a hurry. Allen misses, but the rebound tapped to Doris. Now Allen still can't find her shot. Hester running the floor. Layup counts and a foul. Abby's got to take a timeout right here. That's 12 straight points getting ready to go to the free throw line. And right now, way too many turnovers, bad shot selection on the offensive end has allowed Randolph Bacon to get out in transition. And that's the one thing you can't see if you're a Lynchburg fan is Randolph Bacon in transition. There is the Hornet timeout, 19 to 11. The Yellow Jackets in front with just over 11 minutes to play in the first half. What has happened with Randolph Macon taking control over the last few minutes? Well, you hate to say it's as simple as this, but Forbush went to the bench. Forbush had six points. She was dominating on the interior, maybe not making all of her shots, but getting offensive rebounds and able to slow down the game by pushing it inside. She left the game. The guards missed a couple of outside shots, led to some breakouts, and when this Randolph Macon gets offense gets rolling. It's like a train coming down the tracks. Sometimes you just got to get out of the way. Yellow Jacket fans enjoying the start for their team. The winner meets Guilford in the championship game at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And don't forget, later on this evening on ODAC.TV, we've got the men's semifinals. Guilford on the women's side pulling off the first upset, at least in terms of seeding in the ODAC tournament. Uh, the seeds had held up until today. On the men's side, it has uh, been more than a little bit wild. You've got number five, Eastern Midnight, and number eight, Hampton, Sydney, followed by number two, Virginia Wesleyan, and number 11, Washington and Lee. Yeah, they, we talked about that. We talked about it on Thursday when we saw the Eastern Midnight Guilford matchup. Would it really be an upset if they won? All during the season, these four teams that are playing today are the best four women's teams in the league. You could just pick them out of a hat and give them a seed. They're definitely the best four teams that we had in the league all year long. Kajay Hester going to the line, look to complete the three-point play. She does, so it's a nine-point advantage for Randolph Macon. They've got to get it across half court, allow Forbush to establish herself back inside and see if they can get her a look. Traveling call. You don't want Forbush handling the ball 60 feet from the rim. Well, that's the thing. You've got three post players in the game right now, you know, three six-footers, only one true ball handler. That's Ann Doris, your backup point guard in the game for Lynchburg. And that's trouble with that defensive pressure that Randolph Macon implores. Clear out for Hester. Going to work on Doris and scoring again. Why not? Two nice driving baskets. Hester, five straight points. And they've both been with driving baskets to the right side. 
15 unanswered Yellow Jacket points. There's a Randolph-Macon foul at midcourt. It's going against Katie Anderson, her first. Five team fouls each way with 10.40 to play. Now Lynchburg, they've got to get the inside game established. They've got to chip away at this lead. You've kind of let it get away a little bit here, but you've still got it not even the midway point of the first half. Plenty of time to scratch and claw back in, but you're going to have to play inside out against this randolph Bacon pressure. When it could really use some Shannon Allen offense right about now. Allen off the dribble. Does not get the roll, but follows the miss. The Hornets have a new shot clock, and Doris fouled on the reach in by Hubert. And just way too much dribbling on that possession. I mean, she, she hit, put the ball on the floor about 15 times in one setting without passing the ball. You saw cutters running into each other. The offense right now for Lynchburg College completely out of sorts. Storing drought of about three and a half minutes for Lynchburg. You can survive that against some teams, but not against randolph Make it. It's going to stay with the Hornets. Still can't get a shot to drop. And again, two mid-range jump shots that were highly contested instead of trying to get the ball inside. Your post players have got to get a touch on the block. Looking for Goldsmith, but Parsons reaching in there to get the tie-up. Lynchburg does have the arrow. Nothing coming easy for the Hornets on the offensive end right now. The best 10-minute defensive stretch we've seen out of Randolph making really all season long. They've picked a good time to turn up the defensive intensity. A much needed basket, Sammy Goldsmith. And that long pass sails out of bounds as Taylor Huber lost her footing in the open floor. They don't mind that. They'll have some turnovers attacking the basket. They don't mind pushing the ball down the floor. If they throw it out of bounds, then they'll come back and set their half-court defense. But they're going to do that all day long, try and push the ball quickly. Allen had the ball knocked away, gets it back, but still can't hit. Yeah, and they've just completely shut her down. She hasn't been able to get any open looks. Even that shot right there was with a hand in her face. Allen an 0-4 start from the field. Hester not able to convert on that drive, and now Allen racing ahead of the back, but here come Huber and Parsons. Good control, and Shannon Allen is on the board. Nice, nice control right there, and hopefully that's going to help get her going. She made a good decision not to go hard and fade out of bounds. She pulled up, banked in and off the glass, stopped the Randolph making run, and hopefully get her going offensively. Hornets within seven. Hester a step back three. And that's short, one and done. Forbush grabs the rebound. And a silly foul from Mills there. It's going to be her second and also put the Hornets in the bonus. And that's going to put Forbush back at the free throw line. She knocked down a couple earlier when she had that six-point run to start the game. So now you get her back involved. Allen sees the ball go through the basket. Forbush, if she can knock down these free throws, now you've got your two offensive threats going here a little bit as we approach the nine-minute mark of the first half. Forbush 75% at the charity strike this season. Front end of the one and one, up and in. Yellow Jackets points seem to come in bunches. They go on several runs throughout the game, but they have some dry spells. They're in one right now, and Lynchburg has scored six straight points. And that's why if you're Lynchburg, you're in the middle of this dry spell. You're pushing it inside. You want to see the fouls mount on Randolph Macon. They're already in the bonus, and you want to see them have to really work on the defensive end, but then you get a situation like that. That's a pure basketball score right there. That's a scores play. Penetration, reverse layup, draws the foul. And it can happen so quick. It looked like they had her cut off. She found a seam. Huber gets right the basket and now has a chance at a three-point play. Lauren Pindley with her second foul, the reverse layup and one. We'll see Jamie Grace for the first time. The 6-2 freshman from Austin, Texas. Huber, who missed a pair of free throws earlier, rattles that one home. She's got eight points. And Randolph making back in front by eight. Nice job right there of making your adjustments against the full court pressure. They ran a post player into the middle of the floor, got it in the middle of the floor, were able to reverse it and beat the pressure easily this time rather than trying to dribble through it. Hornets avoid a turnover on the perimeter. Shot clock at 10. I think Huber 
is going to pick up her second foul, trying to fight through a screen. And that's big, if she's gonna have to spend those last eight and a half minutes on the bench, that takes away your most explosive score out there for Randolph Macon. Anderson hasn't really gotten going. It's been really Hester and Huber who have provided the big punch during this run for Randolph Macon. Huber will sit with two personals at the 829 mark. Doris 71% at the line. First free throw is up and good. Seven of seven for Lynchburg at the line here in the first half, and they've needed every one. Well, it slows the game down. When you can get to the free throw line, it slows the game down. That's what Lynchburg needed. They just needed to slow down, catch their breath, get back into a half-court style of basketball, and we've seen they've closed the gap. Barry back in for Randolph-Macon. Parsons. Just Bug Tavine handing off to Cortina. Possession. Winding down, shot clock at eight. Sarah Parsons takes it right down the lane and scores. And if they're gonna put Allen on her and have to play 25 feet from the basket, she's gonna get beat off the dribble. Somebody has to step in and stop that penetration. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. The Yellow Jackets using a 15 to nothing run to take command. Currently up 27-19. Overplay for Barry. Now Hairston tries the three, nothing but that. And that was right in front of us. You could tell as soon as that left their hands, that was going in. Nice shot and they needed it. Perfect time for the first year guard to knock down her first three of the game. Lynchburg within five. Hairston defending Cortina. Not without her dribble, Barry comes back to help. So far, Forbush has done to Anderson exactly what she did to Odak Player of the Year, Paxton Gwynn on Thursday. Completely shut her down on the offensive end. Coach's track deflections, two big ones for Lynchburg late in the Randolph making possession. The shot clock is at four with a sideline inbounds play coming up. You just gotta watch Parsons. You know she's coming off a couple screens here. You're gonna have to switch. Make sure you keep the ball out of her hands. Unable to, and Parsons going to the free throw line as a result. That's going to be two on Allen. It's a tough matchup for Allen. You knew the screen was coming. She was able to stay with her, but she was so close to her. All Parsons did was catch the ball, take her right to the basket, and now Allen may have to take a seat with those two fouls. And Andorra is needing some attention from the trainer as well. Katie Reeves is back at the scores table. It looks like Sir, Abby Palisic wants to bring Reeves in for Allen. And that's not a bad idea. You've got so much size at the four and five position. You can afford to go with three smaller guards against this Randolph making pressure. The Yellow Jackets struggling at the free throw line now four out of nine. Parsons just one for three, coming in at 79.5%. That's uncharacteristic for her. She's almost automatic when she gets to the free throw strike. Eight points in the first half. There's number nine for the junior from Glen Allen. Back to a six-point lead. Allen sitting, so the Hornets go to a three-guard look. Doris trying to feed inside for Grace, stolen away by Barry, racing ahead of the pack. Reeves giving chase, but Barry strong to the rim. That's why you see these spurts from Randolph Macon. They get so many transition baskets because as soon as they get the ball on the defensive end, they're sprinting down the floor. They're not waiting for you to get back and play defense. You've got to hustle back. 30 to 22, six and a half minutes to go. Hairston gets by Parsons, the floater's short. Rebound knocked away off of Lynchburg. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. You got 6-1 and 6-2 in the front court right now and they haven't touched the ball yet. I still, I like the attacking from the Lynchburg guards, but you've got to get the ball inside against this smaller randolph making team. Interior defense is their one Achilles heel. Yellow Jackets trying to push the lead back to double figures. Barry for three, it's off, and Forbush with the rebound. Ahead comes Ann Doris. Back out front for Reeves. You can see Forbush posting up, calling for the basketball. The double teamed, and the ball pops out to Hairston. 
Reeves for three around his screen, won't go. Offensive rebound as Dora sneaks in. Nice hustle by Dora. She's done a good job. Now they're going to call the hand check. She was riding her pretty good with the hand out there. I believe that's Cortina. It is number two on Cortina, ninth team foul. So Doris will shoot one and one. You see Kaylee Patterson returning. Also checking in for the first time for Lynchburg is Sarah Coronel. Set the five for you. After uh, Doris's trip at the free throw line, the Hornets still haven't missed. Doris is three for three. Lynchburg is a team, nine for nine. Trying to pull back within six with 5.45 to go. In and out that time. Forbush had a chance at the rebound, not quite able to grab it. So it's Forbush, Patterson, Doris, Coronel, and Reeves against Parsons, Liverman. That's Hester back at the point, Staples. And the Jackets going a bit deeper into their bench to bring in Caroline Young. Young gets a touch on the outside. Now Parsons guarded up top by Reeves, giving her space. The deep three is well off. And the rebound controlled again by Forbush. That's a little bit better matchup for Hollins, having Reeves guard um, Parsons, not have to play as close to her as Allen did, and he takes away that ability to drive around the defender. Doris with a wild shot from the baseline. It will stay Lynchburg ball out of bounds. Even when Lynchburg comes in with backup guards, they're 5'11". I mean, they're just huge. Forbush muscling one up against a double team. Well defended. Nice defense by Young coming in, giving a little bit of size, giving with Mills with the two fouls. You've got to give Anderson a break. She did a good job right there of holding her own against a pretty good post player in Forbush. Taylor Huber also on the bench with two. Doris fouling Hester going for the steal. And the Yellow Jackets also in the bonus, so one and one for Kajay Hester. That's Doris the second. She's been the best guard so far here in the first half for Lynchburg College. Now she's going to have to take a seat picking up her second foul as well. Hester one for one at the line. 81% there on the season. But another missed free throw for Randolph Macon. Five out of 11 at the stripe in the first half. Fortunately for Lynchburg, Randolph Macon not hitting their free throws, or Macon would have had this to a 14, 15 point lead by now. Coronel tries the three. That won't go. And here come the Yellow Jackets. Parsons trying to figure out the best way to get around Goldsmith, who stands her ground. That was a great defensive possession by Goldsmith. Parsons has been having her way, taking people to the basket in the first half. Goldsmith was able to cut her off without committing the foul. Forbus goes down, Staples misses, but Caroline Young cleans up. And we saw that in the Guilford game on Thursday. A post player comes into the game that doesn't average a whole lot of points and has a huge run. Young, great defensive stop on one end and then finished it with a basket on the other. Forbush, good control underneath to answer. And that they're gonna, they need to get the ball to her. I mean, I know it sounds like a broken record, but if they're gonna have a chance to come back, they've gotta push it inside. But when you start banking in threes, it's gonna be an uphill battle for the Hornets. Anna Liverman off the window with her second tray. And the Yellow Jacket lead is 10. And Staples with his steal. Oh, she had Hester ahead of the pack, didn't see her. They have just way too many turnovers for the Hornets. We talked about it in the opening. If the Hornet guards could not take care of the basketball, this is what you were going to see. And right now, Randolph Macon rolling. Layup and one for Sarah Parsons as Randolph Macon stretches the lead out to 12. And that's huge. With Parsons having the big first half, even though Anderson's not doing anything, it allows you to keep Huber and those two fouls over on the bench so that she'll be fresh and ready to go in the second half. Abby Pizik has to spend her third time out of the first half. A free throw coming for Parsons with Randolph making up 37 to 25. Earlier today, top seed Easter midnight knocked out by number four Guilford, the two-time defending Odak champions, beat the Royals for the third straight year here in Salem, 61 to 54. Morgan King, 27 points and seven rebounds, shot 11 of 13 from the field to lead the way for Guilford at the other end, the Quakers holding the Royals, the second best offensive team in the Odak behind Randolph Macon to 31% shooting. Well, 
Eastern Mennonite likes to play the same way Randolph Macon does. They like to turn you over on the defensive end. They like to force you into bad shots and push the ball down the floor. They were not able to do that, thanks in part to King missing just two shots, 11 of 13 from the field. Her front court mate, Gabby Ogilvy, another big game, 14 points. But Kayla Adams, second half, 9.7 rebounds for the game. Almost all of that damage right there in the second half helped Guilford keep Eastern Midnight at arm's length the entire second half. Here in the second semifinal, Lynchburg in peril right now. The lead is 12. It could be 13 if Parsons hits the free throw. What are you looking for if you're the Hornets in the final uh, three minutes here in the first half? It's simple. There's three minutes and 23 seconds. You've got to look at this right now as a two-point Randolph making lead. You've got to take the lead. You've got to cut the lead under 10 points going into the half. If they do that, they can feel comfortable. If Randolph Macon's able to go on one of their patented runs, this game will all but be over by halftime. Parsons has a dozen, and it's 38 to 25. Randolph Macon showing some full court pressure as well. Let's get it up to Goldsmith. Here's Forbush down the lane, and she's fouled. Nice job right there. It's Forbush is able to get inside, she was able to split the double team. Goldsmith did a good job of not attacking. It was a one-on-two situation. She didn't have numbers. She waited for her teammates to get down there. And now Forbush right back to the free throw line where she's had some success this afternoon. Second foul on Lauren Vunktaveen. That's the 11th point for Cheney Forbush, the sophomore from Clifton. I think she's realized that she's the only thing that's working right now against the Randolph-Macon defense. It's, it's, it's the big mismatch that you have out there on the floor is Forbush on the interior against the interior defense. Paige Mills now with two fouls, Vuk Devine with two fouls, Anderson's out there with one foul. She's already had to use Caroline Young. They just don't have the post players to stop Forbush on the interior. She's got a dozen, nearly half of Lynchburg's tally. Anderson working baseline and scoring over top of Patterson. And that's what you can't see if you're going positive. You can't see Anderson get going right here in this last three minutes of the half. You've shut her down. Huber's hit a couple shots. Yeah, Parsons has hers. But if all three of those players get going, it makes it a really tough uphill climb the second half. Old Smith threads the needle to Forbush. And she'll draw another Randolph-Macon foul on the interior, this one against Stephanie Staple. And that was smart. Goldsmith, yes, she could have taken a 10-foot open jump shot right there, but you're riding your hot hand right now, and that's Forbush on the interior, much like we saw Guilford do, getting the ball to King late in possessions and letting her be the deciding factor. Forbush continuing to sink her free throws, seven out of seven at the line. It's a huge advantage when you've got a post player that can knock down free throws because they make them virtually unstoppable on the inside. Morgan King, a case in point for Guilford. Also helps when you can hit a 16, 18 foot jump shot as King lit up Easter Midnight earlier today. It's, it certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> 11 point Randolph making Lee. Just over two minutes to go. Here in the opening stanza. Shot clock winding down. Liverman looking for another three. Too strong. And Patterson corrals the loose ball. And that's huge. We talked about it. Three and a half minutes to play. You're down 13. All you've got to do is cut it under 10 going into the break, and you can have some momentum going into the second half. Forbush wants it right now. And that's why she's going back to the line. Right back to the free throw line. They're going to have to start running double teams at them. The guards are going to have to double down. Right now, we haven't shown, Lynchburg hasn't shown, other than a couple of streaky shots by Harrison, maybe Reeves, that they can consistently knock down outside shots. One of your better outside shooters is Allen, sitting there on the bench with two fouls. So right now, they're going to have to start running double teams down, and I'm sure that's what Carol Hayes talking to her assistants about right now. The lead is 10, a chance for Forbush to make it. Nine, that was Staples' second foul. So now Caroline Young comes back in the ball game. They already got three post players have picked up two fouls just trying to guard Forbush in the first 20 minutes of play. She is 10 for 10 at the free throw line, 16 first half points for Cheney Forbush. And they've cut it to nine. If they can just keep it under double digits going into the half, they will have weathered this storm with the foul trouble for Allen over on the bench. Anderson going to work at the other end. 
and she'll be shooting too. And that's what she's capable of doing. Her defender did a pretty good job, Patterson, but eventually she was able to make that spin move off of her. And when she did, Harrison stepped over, picked up the foul, and now Anderson gets a chance to push the lead back to double figures. Big quarterfinal game for Katie Anderson, the sophomore from Beaver Dam, Virginia. 68% free throw shooter. Splashes on the first. Minute 35 to go. 41-31, a second shot coming for Anderson as she pushes the lead back to 11. And that allows them to get back into their pressure defense and Lynchburg's had some trouble with this at, here in the first half. It's Goldsmith handling the ball in the deep backcourt. Now Reeves gets it over. Goldsmith smotting up for the open three, unable to hit. Follows her shot though, gets the rebound and then runs into Caroline Young. Another good defensive play by Young, but Lynchburg able to extend the position, and there's Forbush once again. 18 for Forbush, quick Randolph making turnover. Lynchburg gets it back down by nine. And they tend to do that from time to time. They push the ball up so quickly that sometimes there's some errant passes, and right now with Forbush leading the way, Lynchburg's had a chance to cut this to nine, maybe even a little closer as we enter the last minute of play. Something tells me number 30 is going to get the ball. Still no double team. It's just you can't stop that one-on-one. -on -one. Young had come in, done a pretty good job, but when you've got your third string post player out there trying to stop somebody as hard as Forbush, you're going to have to run double teams at them. And Lynchburg, we talked about it, three minutes and 20 seconds left to play. They're down 13. Now they've cut it to seven. They've got the momentum. Even if Randolph making scores right here, they'll get the last shot and they can take the momentum into the break. And that's what Lynchburg had to be, had to do to get back in this game. Carol LaHaye calling the timeout, something that she and her coaching staff will have to discuss at halftime is how do you stop Cheney Forbush? We thought Morgan King had an impressive first half for Guilford, 17 points at the break. Forbush has 20 of Lynchburg's 35 and could have had more, missed four layups in the first three or four minutes of the game. She could have almost 30 points right now at the half had she made those easy shots. They do not have an answer for her inside. They're gonna have to run guards at her. So when the entry pass comes in, you've got two choices. You can either run the offside guard in and give up the skip pass, or you can run ball sack guard. If your player throws it in, you've got to turn around and double right away and just close out and hope they don't knock down threes. But right now, you cannot allow her to keep having the looks that she's getting one-on-one -on -one inside. On the randolph making side, Sarah Parsons has 12. Taylor Huber, eight points in nine minutes as she's been in some foul trouble. Katie Anderson now with six. Early 15-zip run for the Yellow Jackets gave them an 11-point lead. Lynchburg within seven. 13 seconds differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And look for them to try and get Parsons something here. Anderson can penetrate, or they can penetrate and kick it back out to Liverman for a look at a three here as the seconds wind down. Ten to shoot. Liverman across to Hester. Hester down the lane. Hands off to Young. Mid-range jumper won't go. Rebound tap to her. That shot no good. And Hester oh. grabs it, eight seconds left. Last look for the Yellow Jackets, Liverman for three. That's off, oh, you got a huge. foul on the rebound, and that's gonna mean free throws at the other end for the Hornets with 2.8 seconds to go. And Coach LaHaye being really encouraging to Caroline Young, but you know in her head, she's like, you got two offensive rebounds and you didn't pull it out with the shot clock off and then you commit a foul. So the last 13 seconds, not going the way the Yellow Jackets would like to see it. And now if Reeves can knock this down, we've got a ball game to start the second half. Double bonus, so two shots for Katie Reeves. To be fair to Caroline Young, this is the third game that she has played in all season and it comes in the ODAC semifinals. And she's done some really good things out there. She really has. She made a couple of nice stops on Forbush. She did score one basket. We would like to have seen her pull it out right there at the end of the first half. Anderson wasn't too far off with the heave, but randolph Macon will take a seven-point lead into the locker room, 42-35, to 35, our halftime tally. Strangely enough, it's the Hornets who might feel a little bit better about the way that half ended, even with the two late free throw misses. Oh, right now, the Hornets have all the momentum. Lynchburg has all the momentum. 
we talked about it. Three minutes and 30 seconds left to go. You're down 13. What you asked me, what do you have to do to get back in this? You have to outscore them that last three and a half minutes. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to worry about the big run, the 15-0 run they had. You didn't have to worry about anything that happened in the past. You had to play that three and a half minutes for that three and a half minutes, and Lynchburg dominated that last three and a half minutes, and now they carry the momentum into the break. Still, though, the Yellow Jackets on top at halftime here in the second semifinal. Who will move on to face number four Guilford in Sunday's championship? We'll find out in just a bit. Stay with us here for more ODAC tournament action on ODAC.tv. <laughs> For the second half of our second ODAC women's basketball semifinal, number two Randolph Macon leading number three Lynchburg 42 to 35. Jeremy Franklin, Richie Wagon are back with you. Let's talk first about the Hornets who cut a double digit lead down to seven going into the break. Cheney Forbush 20 points in the first 20 minutes, five of seven from the field, made all 10 of her free throws, also grabbed six rebounds, almost single handedly keeping Lynchburg in the game. Well, she did. We talked about it. Three and a half minutes to go, 13-point lead. They just needed to keep it under 10 to have a chance. Forbush scored, I think, every point down the stretch inside or from the free throw line and was able to give Lynchburg a fighting chance and take that momentum into the break and now see what they can do over this first five minutes coming out. Can they maintain that momentum that they got. The Yellow Jackets want to run. They want to push the pace. They were able to do that. Nine fast break points in the first half. 12 points off of six Lynchburg turnovers. So six turnovers and you scored off of every single one of those. You converted that into 12 points. That's the Randolph Macon game. They had that 15 point run and they did it by getting turnovers and easy transition baskets. Winner moves on to take on fourth seed Guilford in the championship tomorrow. Entry pass knocked away. The Yellow Jackets get it back. Taylor Huber takes it up and is fouled. And you had to look for her to try and get involved early. Only played about eight or nine minutes with those two fouls in the first half. She was finding a rhythm, hit a three-pointer, had a couple of steals to transition baskets. Now see if she can get acclimated back into the game and help Sarah Parsons out a little bit here at the beginning of the second half. Huber making the most of the nine minutes that she did play as she scored eight points in the first half. Starting lineups for both teams, Goldsmith, Reeves, Forbush, Allen, and Pinley for Lynchburg. Huber hits the second free throw, play with Parsons, Hester, Mills, and Anderson. So a nine-point lead for Randolph Macon. So you had Forbush leading the way there in the first half, and now Allen playing with those two fouls. You want to see if maybe you can get her back involved in the situation here early. Couple of looks for Forbush. Not able to score. Anderson altered the first shot. Mills blocked the second. Rebound out of bounds to Lynchburg. But there was the double team we were talking about. They ran Mills and Anderson, both post players, at Forbush when she caught the ball inside. That's what they did not do at the end of the first half. Forbush on the block. Unable to score, and Pinley called for her third foul on the rebound. That's going to be her third foul. Really hasn't been able to get going. The same thing happened to her on Thursday. Got in some foul trouble, never got acclimated to the game. And I believe she's the third or fourth leading scorer for the Hornets. Has been pretty much non-existent in their first two games of this tournament. 8.8 .8 points per game for Pinley. That is fourth on the team behind Allen, Forbush, and Hairston. Shannon Allen just two points in the first half. Picked up her second foul, set for a while. Traveling call on Taylor Huber. And Allen really out of sorts. The, the Lynchburg offense didn't really get start going until about the last five minutes of the half. They were out of sync. Cutters on top of each other, not good spacing on the floor. See if they can correct that and maybe get their leading score going here to give Forbush some help. Goldsmith on the drive, whistle on a foul on the Yellow Jackets. That Goldsmith's done a good job of attacking the basket. She hasn't been able to finish. She is one of six from the field, but she has been able to get in deep into the defense, which has created some opportunities, whether it's teammates on offensive rebounds or now her getting to the free throw line. Just a 49% foul shooter, but the first one up and good. Forbush 10 of 10 at the line as a team. Lynchburg 15 of 18. Make it 16 of 19 with that first make for Goldsmith. And that's keeping them in the game right now. How big is that when a sub 50% shooter makes two? The lead down to seven. 
That was huge after Reeves had a chance to cut the lead even further with two seconds to go in the first half. Missed a pair to come back out in the second half and start hitting your free throws again. Anderson on the drive and the finish at the rim. She's so good at that. She's such a good penetrator. She's able to attack the basket. She's long. She's got great vision. She can handle the ball, finish with either hand. Nice finish right there for Anderson. Forbush feeding Penley. And traveling called as Anderson and Mills were there defensively. And I think they missed the first travel the second time. Couldn't let her get away with it twice. She drug the pivot foot the first time. The second time she went with the up and under, drug the pivot foot once again, and got caught that time. Been a tough afternoon for Penley, and she will head to the bench. Kaylee Patterson back in. Patterson defensively did a good job in the first half, controlled some boards but not the offensive threat that Penley is. Great cut by Huber, Parsons finds her, and the lead back to double digits for Randolph Macon. So Huber getting going here quickly in the second half, and it's what you expect from a person who has, a player who averages 20 points a game. Reeves no good with the three. Forbush keeps the ball in play, but Goldsmith is unable to save it. Good adjustment there at halftime by the randolph making coaching staff, Coach LaHaye and her assistant. Forbush got the ball inside twice. They've double teamed her both times. So they've tried to take that away from Lynchburg and see who's going to step up and help Forbush the rest of the way. Huber runs into Shannon Allen. That will be her third foul. Great defense right there. It was a risky play by Allen, but she has established her position. The contact was made. So one of the leading scorers for the prospective team was going to pick up their third foul. Advantage now to Lynchburg. Little Russian roulette here in the ODAC tournament. <laughs> no doubt. 48-37, two and a half minutes into the second half. So Huber to the bench with three fouls. And Hannah Liverman back in the game. Reeves coming around his screen. And the Hornets working it inside to Forbush, but again you see the Randolph making double team. Held ball whistle is going to keep it at this end. And that's the thing, the double team's coming. They're leaving Patterson. We talked about Patterson not quite being the offensive threat that Penley is. So Penley out of the game. You can run her defender now, Patterson's that is, at the double team and really not worry about Patterson scoring a bunch of points on you. Mills shaken up during the scrum for the loose ball, so she subs out. Back in is Lauren Vunktaveen. Forbush again. Parsons comes to pick up the loose ball. Had a triple team they ran at her that time. Parsons came late as the third defender and was able to take the ball away for an easy transition basket. And now Lynchburg finds himself down again, 13 points. Randolph making matching its biggest lead of the afternoon. 16.45 to play. Lynchburg's going to have to get something out of Allen if they're going to come back here. She'll work it into Forbush. Good pass. Forbush with the finish. And a Randolph making foul. And that's the danger of running guards at a post player on the double team. Guards are going to be outmatched. They tend to reach in a lot. And Forbush was able to establish position. The foul came from Parsons, who was trying to double down and take it away from her like she did the possession before. So the first points of the second half for Cheney Forbush, 22 in the ball game. And we'll see if she can stay perfect at the foul line, trying to pull Lynchburg back within 10. And that's what Lynchburg did when they found themselves down 13 in the first half. They got the ball inside, slowed the game down, and it's exactly what they did on that possession. And Forbush finally with a miss at the stripe. So the lead stays at 11. Caroline Young seeing more minutes for Randolph Macon. Played well in that first half. Got a foul well off the basketball. And that's on Hairston. She was trying to go on Parsons. Parsons had set her up for that backdoor cut. Hairston, really a good foul, reached out and grabbed her because Parsons would have had a wide open layup on that backdoor cut. They had cleared out the help side. Reeves punching the ball away. Randolph Macon will inbound. A few feet closer to the baseline. Yellow Jacket's going to work it inside for Anderson. 
and she draws the foul underneath against Patterson. That's a tough break for Patterson. She established really good position. Yeah, there was contact, but to me it looked like Anderson initiated that contact. Tough job, tough uh, break right there for Patterson where I thought she had played pretty good defense. Second foul on Patterson, the senior from Fairfax. Anderson at the line. And she is now three for three. And it's funny with Randolph Macon. Huber spent a lot of time on the bench. She's already up to double figures, I believe. Anderson's starting to creep her way up there. The big three for Randolph Macon getting the job done on the offensive end. The points always seem to come for that trio. And they tend to come in bunches, just like the 15-0 run we saw in the first half. That's 10 now for Anderson, 52-39. Allen on the perimeter, long two, will not go. Forbush grabs the offensive rebound. And the Yellow Jackets have switched into a zone. And we talked about that at halftime, you and I. I was wondering if they were going to go to that. And what did you tell me? Can they rebound out of it? And they've already given up one offensive rebound when they went to the zone. And Doris with her first field goal. A baseline jump shot. Trims the lead back down to 11. Bug Tavini gives it out front to Hester. 11 on the shot clock. Feet inside Anderson. Patterson defends that well. Great defense. I watched those two go at it for the entire 30 seconds on that possession. That was great defense by Patterson not reaching in and being able to stop Anderson on the drive. One official had a hell ball whistle, but the foul is called on Kajay Hester, her first. And it was a good call. She had a lot of ball, but she wrapped up her arms and had her off arm wrapped around the waist. You could have caught her, whether it was the reach in or the hold, either one. The officials got that one right. Kirsten makes the free throw. 15.07 to play. She can pull Lynchburg back within nine. Maybe not the pace of the game, but this game scoring-wise reminds me a lot of the Lynchburg-Roanoke game we saw where Lynchburg would get that 12, 14-point lead and Roanoke would cut into it. Same thing we're seeing here this afternoon. Randolph-Macon racing out to a 12, 13-point lead and then Lynchburg cutting it back to six or seven. Another foul down low. Patterson and Anderson continuing to battle. And Kaylee Patterson will pick up her third. Wish they could have an ISO camera on that matchup right there. Those two really going at it on this end of the floor. Anderson wanting to post up. Patterson not giving an inch. Patterson picked up her third. And the way these two are going at it, I'd like to be probably going to see another foul. And there's the double foul right there. Those two have been going at it really, really hard. So Anderson will pick up her third and Patterson her fourth. And, and you, had, you had to do it because you had to get that, that matchup needed to get under control. A lot of physical play down there between those two young ladies. Neither one of them wanting to give an inch. Neither one of them gave an inch. Now both of them going to have to take a seat with fouls. Marisha Berry has come in for Randolph Macon. This is Mills back on the floor. Berry's got the open look. No good. Nice inside out look right there. Randolph making foul on the rebound, going against Vugdevine. That'll be her third. That's going to be her third. Yeah, Anderson had two. Vugdevine had two. Mills had two. Um, I believe Staples had two. They had a lot of players with two fouls. Now those fouls starting to mount for both teams. You have to go deep into these benches as the fouls are starting to mount. And also, we're going to see a parade to the free throw line. Both teams on six fouls, so the next one will put the other side in the bonus. We've still got over 14 minutes to play. And Allen is going to be heading to the line. And, and Barry, Barry bout, bailed her out on that one. There was no way she was going to make that shot. She was just trying to get something going as she struggled here from the floor tonight or this afternoon. She was just forcing the issue. Barry reached in, bailed her out. And now Allen has a chance to score. See that ball go through the basket. Scores have a knack 
once they see ball go through the basket, the basket starts getting bigger and bigger for them. And that's what you'd like to see if you're Coach Pozik and the Lynchburg College fans right now. Carol Hay taking a timeout with her team up by 10. Probably a good thing for both teams to have a moment here. Catch your breath. This game has turned very, very physical in the second half. Very physical and very up-tempo. And that takes away the advantage of Forbush inside. When you start playing this frantic pace that they're playing, she doesn't have a chance to get up and down the floor and establish her position. And right now with the fouls starting to mount on the interior players for Randolph-Macon, and I'm sitting there with somebody with 20 points having the game she's going having, I'm getting her the ball as fast as I possibly can. So Shannon Allen at the line, just two points in the game for the first team all ODAC pick, the junior from Warwick, New York. On the season, Allen 83%. At the charity strike, first one up and good. And when you've got an excellent free throw shooter like that, you've got to get to the free throw line. It calms everything down. Like I said, you see that ball go through the basket, and it can completely change the game that you're having. Allen pulling Lynchburg within eight. Randolph making up by as many as 13 in each half here today. The halftime margin was seven. Stephanie Staples back in the low post. Kick out. Parsons three is short. And the rebound controlled by Doris. Great move by Coach Pizek coming out of that timeout. She went to her 1-3-1 half-court trap to give Randolph making a different look, and they weren't able to get a good look at the basket. Henley was open at the other end. Hairston couldn't get her the ball in time. Parsons missed the layup, goes down hard. Now it's Hairston ahead of the pack. She misses, but Allen right there, six-point game. Now Allen's starting to get it going a little bit. Ran the floor really well there. Doris recognized she had Hairston ahead of the pack, made a nice pass. Allen running the floor, got the put back. Liverman in and out on the three. Offensive rebound, Mills, and then a foul on Penley, and that will be her fourth. That's going to be her fourth. Good hustle right there by Paige Mills. We talked about her in the first half, how she gives you that little bit of extra. She just plays hard. She plays physical. She controls the boards. Not going to put up huge numbers, but now she's taken one of the Lynchburg College scores out of the game with her fourth foul. So Penley sitting with four. Patterson on the bench with four as Mills misses the free throw. Forbush is out of the game, so you've got Jamie Grace back out there. And on the floor for the first time is Sarah Kuhn. Playing with Allen, Doris, and Hairston. And there's a Randolph-Macon foul. Liverman getting a bit too aggressive. And it's going to allow Allen to have a chance to get her fifth and sixth straight points now and really get her going. That's huge for Lynchburg. You've got to have her points. She wasn't having a very good game to start there in the first half. She's come out here in the second, played well within herself, and now the points are starting to add up. Makes the front end of the one and one. That was Liverman's second foul, and the eighth on Randolph-Macon. Lynchburg is close as it's been in a long, long time. Allen trying to make this a four-point Yellow Jacket lead, and she does. And Coach LaHaye made the move that she needed to. Even though Huber's got the three fouls, she was getting a good game going here to the start of the second half, got her right back in the game. Missed the runner. Hairston was trying to sell the charge. Allen boards it, and Lynchburg can come even closer. Now slow it down, get set up in your half-court offense, get your spacing set, and see if you can get Allen something some kind of a clean look in this possession. There's Allen up top. Travels. I would like to see her go ahead and take that three. She's got that range. Barry came over. She's given up a half a foot to her. She could have easily taken that three-pointer over the top. Instead, allowed Barry to close out to her, shuffled her feet, and committed the turnover. Yellow Jackets up by four. 12 and a half minutes to play. Taylor Huber sinks a big three. And that's why you bring her back in the game. You had a 13 point lead, you got cut to four. You've got your leading scorer who's sitting over there with some foul trouble. And now that gives her what, already seven points here in three or four minutes of play in the second half. And then a steal by Marisha Berry. Berry going inside to Staples. And no good over top of Grace. And here comes Hairston, two on one. Pass a little bit behind Allen, but Allen, oh, oh, everything 
But the roll off the rim there on the layup attempt. Oh, that was unfortunate. She should have taken one more dribble and drawn Huber. Huber was back with three fouls. She wasn't going to stop that transition opportunity. And instead, Lynchburg took a worse shot than they needed to. Then a fine pass from Taylor Huber. Sets up a layup for Stephanie Staples. Randolph making a little mini run here. Five straight points, but it feels like a lot more as the lead is back to nine. Well, you don't want that five to turn into ten, and that's why Coach Fizek took her time out when she saw the wheels start turning again for Randolph-Macon. How fast can they score? Just about five minutes ago, they were doing nothing. Stagnant, looked like they were moving in mud. Then all of a sudden, five points in about a minute. That's what they're capable of doing, and you've got to be able to stop those runs, whether with a score or, in this case, a timeout. 57 to 48. Taylor Huber, whose minutes were limited by foul trouble in the first half. And again here in the second half, after picking up her third, 15 points in the ball game for the first team all Odak pick who averages 22 a night. Katie Anderson getting involved in more ways than one scoring and then uh, the battle with Kaylee Patterson that has resulted in both players sitting in uh, foul trouble. On the Lynchburg side though, Shannon Allen has found her offensive game. And that's what they needed. If they were going to have any chance to come back and win this game today, Allen was going to have to do something. We knew Forbush isn't going to come back and put up 20 more in the second half. There were going to be adjustments made. She wasn't going to be able to do that. So Allen was going to have to step up and help out because right now the Lynchburg guards, none of the three or four of them that have played big minutes have really gotten any kind of rhythm going offensively. So you're relying on those post players. And Forbush was going to need some help. Allen stepping up playing in the second half the way that she did all season and made her a first team all ODAC performer. So back to a nine point Yellow Jacket lead as the Hornets look to respond. They have never been to the ODAC championship game in women's basketball. Randolph Macon seeking its first appearance since 2011 but the Yellow Jackets are seven time champions as Allen misses the jump shot. Just a little bit different look. Macon that time went to the 2-3 zone coming out of the timeout to try and give Lynchburg just a little different look. Liverman missing. Allen fights off Mills for the rebound. Great rebound right there. She had one hand tied up with Mills. She was able to corral it with the other hand, and that secured the possession for the Hornets. Chaney Forbush waiting to check back in. The Hornets trying to keep her as fresh as possible for the stretch run. Hairston, good look from the corner, but it won't go. And that's the one player that has the capability of scoring a bunch of points in the hurry from the perimeter. Hairston got a great look, went halfway down, just did not go for the first year guard. Huber, 25 footer, no good. Staples fighting for the rebound. Allen blocks this shot, but then Mills followed as it's the Yellow Jackets attacking the offensive glass. You live with that if you're Coach LaHay. Huber, She's not shy. She's going to take her 16, 18, 20 shots a game. And sometimes she's going to take that shot right there. But as good a shooter as she is, she had just drilled a three-pointer from a similar spot on the floor. You really don't mind that look when you've got somebody that's capable of hitting that shot. Mills rims in the first free throw, 54% shooter, the senior from Winchester. So Forbush back in for Kuhn. Just over 10 and a half minutes to play. 10-point Randolph making lead, and now it's 11. And Mills has been huge since that third foul was called on Anderson. Anderson, the way they rotate their players, plays a lot of center position for them, and now with her out of the game, Mills has done a good job beating and banging with these six-footers from Lynchburg and really holding her own here in the second half. Forbush slips behind Mills, gets the feed from Dorison, lays it up and in. And Huber was the double team, she was the help. She didn't want to pick up the fourth foul, so that was an easy finish for Forbush. 24 now for Forbush. Foul on Lynchburg, I believe that's going against Forbush. And that was the right call. That the new impeding rules that they put in early this season has kind of changed the way you've had to teach how to guard cutters. Back in the old days, when I mean old days, just about four or five years ago, you bumped the cutter, you made them go behind you. Now, if you impede that progress with any kind of contact, they're going to call it, and that's what happened to Forbush on that play. Picks up her second foul. Stephanie Staples hits the front end of the one and one. Yellow Jackets just 8 of 14 at the line in the first half. Staples missing there. 
They are now seven of nine, though, in the second half. And the foul lines kept Lynchburg College in the game. Not only their made free throws, but the missed free throws uncharacteristically for Randolph Macon. By my count, Lynchburg 22 out of 27 at the line today. 60 to 50. Hairston, another look from the corner, too strong. And then a frustration foul for the freshman. Not a bad foul. You had a four-on-one opportunity developing for Randolph Macon. But that's what happens. When you take those long shots, if you're not making them, it leads to breakout opportunities for Randolph Macon, and that's when they're so good out in the open court. Got an 81% foul shooter. Shooting two, though, as Randolph Macon hits the double bonus with 9.38 to play. Hester's first is up and in, her sixth point of the day. Four minutes for Caroline Young. Back in in place of Mills. Mills did a great job. You're just hoping Young can come in, give you about a minute, minute and a half of solid play. Keep this lead so that you can give Mills her break and wait as long as you can to bring back Anderson with those three fouls. 11 point advantage for the number two seed. Winner of this game will be wearing the home jerseys tomorrow, taking on Fort City Guilford after the Quakers upset the number one seed Easter Mennonite. Turnover for Lynchburg. Starting to get into another one of those danger zones for the Hornets here. This one perhaps slipping away from them if they don't uh, quell the run from Randolph-Macon. They are. The way they were able to quell the runs in the first half, they were able to get the ball inside. That unexcusable yet a turnover 35 feet from the basket on a bad bounce pass. Huber muscling one up. Player control foul. That's going to be number four. And I'll tell you what, I know Huber's upset about it. I know Coach LaHaye's upset about it. But that's the right call. She put her head down, bowled right over the Lynchburg player. I don't care if the Lynchburg player is just standing there. She's got every right to stand in that spot, as Huber does to penetrate to that point. When she lowered her shoulder to make that contact, the official made a great call on that one. And that hurts Randolph Macon, taking her lead and score and putting her on the bench with nine minutes left to play. Sarah Parsons back in the game. Here's Doris in the middle of the paint. Does not get the roll, but Katie Reeves gets the rebound. Need to try and get the ball into Forbush. She's got a huge advantage over Staples on the interior. Instead, we'll have a foul on the perimeter on Hester that will put Lynchburg in the double bonus. Two shots for Katie Reeves. And that's one of the things that Coach LaHaye was talking about on Thursday. Defensively, they're doing a pretty good job of putting pressure on teams, but then they have the breakdown when it's an extended possession, a lot of reaching, a lot of contact, a lot more fouling than they've ever done in the past, and that's what's really hurt some of their half-court defense this season. Forbush exiting, Kenley back in, and here comes Anderson for Randolph Macon. She sat for a long time after that double foul against Patterson. And Young did exactly what she needed to. She bought you one minute on the clock. You had a couple of fouls, so she was able to get her breath. Anderson now comes in fresh. Yes, she has three fouls, but you've got to go with your veterans right now because you do not want, with Huber on the bench, Lynchburg to start inching closer and closer. Reeves one of two. Hester saving in the rebound. Got a held ball. That's going to give it to Randolph Macon. Things getting a little sloppy right now for both teams. You're not seeing the offenses run with the precision that you were seeing there for that one stretch. Defensively, both teams really getting after it. The fouls are starting to mount. The physicality starting to get more. And you're seeing a lot of balls rolling around the gym and people diving after them, throwing them into areas they probably shouldn't. Randolph making by 10. Parsons fouled by Doris, and it's two shots the rest of the way for both teams. And there's Parsons back in the game. She took a nice long rest as well so that she can go this last eight minutes at 100%. Nice handoff play right there. Parsons passes it to, Do uh, to, excuse me, to Anderson. Anderson has her play on her back, gets the handoff to Parsons, who beat Doris to the spot. And once Doris started playing catch up, the foul was called from behind. 15 now for Parsons, make it 16 as she extends the Yellow Jacket lead to 12. 
mean, neither Allen or Forbush have to touch the ball in a scoring position on this possession. There's Allen from the wing, pulls up for the long two, but it does not go. Now they're in trouble, down 12. A basket here will give Randolph making their largest lead of the afternoon with just eight minutes left to play. Hester looking inside for Staples, turnover. Nice defense by Lynchburg there. They were able to stay between their player and the basket and not let Hester beat them off the dribble the way that we saw her do several times in the first half. Under eight minutes left here in the ODAC semifinals. Randolph making leading Lynchburg 63 to 51. Henley trying the feedback door. Anderson denies it. Another deflection. Liverman comes away with the basketball. Well, she got lucky on the first bad pass. She was able to track it down. Unfortunately, wasn't able to take advantage of it. Ended up with a turnover anyway. Anderson post up and the basket off the glass. Nice move. Henley with four fouls did all she could without fouling Anderson. But Anderson with that spin move was able to square her shoulders and knock it down off the glass. Parsons knocking the ball away on the sideline. 14 points, the biggest lead of the game here for Randolph-Macon. Every possession vital now for Lynchburg. Allen for three. Some jump shots just not falling today, but Forbush with the putback and she's fouled. She's doing everything she possibly can, whether it's rebounding, scoring, playing defense to keep Lynchburg College in the game because on that possession right there, it's not a bad look for Allen, but not in out of the fluent offensive movement. Just kind of set one screen and try to take a long three-pointer. It's fine if it goes, but if it doesn't, you need somebody to help you out inside, and that's what Forbush was able to do once again. Forbush gets the roll, that's her 27th point. And that was huge, stop the Randolph making run, three-point play, allow you to get back and set up your half-court defense. Seven minutes left. Still an 11 point differential. Hester, drive shut off by Doris. Rebound to Forbush, who's surrounded, but dribbles out of it. Can the Hornets string together back to back baskets? Well, what you talked about in the first half, Randolph Macon does have those runs where they score a lot, but they also have a couple of stretches during this uh, game where they do not score, and that's what they're in the midst of right now. Shooters roll for Charmaine Hairston. The ball goes inside out, and Hairston pulls Lynchburg within eight. And that was huge. They needed that three-pointer from somebody. Hairston was able to knock it down, got the shooter's roll, and now Carol Hayes got to wonder when is she going to come back with Huber to try and keep this lead. Parsons attacking on Hairston. Wave off the basket to foul first, but two free throws for Parsons. And that was fortunate right there for Lynchburg College. Hairston, a lot of contact the whole way. Fortunately for them, they caught it on the floor because Parsons looked like to me she had already started her shooting motion. Foul difficulty for both teams here. Patterson with four, Penley with four for Lynchburg. And Doris with three. Hairston just picked up her third. Huber continues to sit for Randolph Macon with four. Anderson, Vugtaveen, and Staples each with three. Two more foul shots for Sarah Parson. 67-57 Yellow Jackets. And now Randolph making, starting to make those free throws that they didn't make in the first half. And if they're able to do that, it's going to be tough to complete the comeback. Allen finally hits from the outside. And that's what I talked about earlier. She had Parsons on her. Talked about not squaring up and being ready to shoot that three. That time she was. And the six-footer over the 5-2 guard was able to knock it down. Anderson dribbles it off her foot. Allen picks it up ahead to Hairston. One on one with Hester and Hairston. Good composure and Lynchburg is within five. Good composure and smart by Hester not to allow them another three point play, which would have been their third consecutive three point play. 67 62. Feed in for Liverman who scores from two point range. Nice cut right there by Liverman. She was able to get her player on her back made the cut inside, defender kind of fell asleep thinking she only stays outside the three-point line. She snuck in and got a big two for the Yellow Jackets. Defense! 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 
Five minutes left, seven point game. Hairston, step back three. Parsons, or Liverman rather, may have gotten a sliver of that, but Shannon Allen with a second chance bucket. That's the thing, long read, long shots lead to long rebounds, and when Randolph Macon gets those and gets out in transition, it's huge for them. When they're not able to come up with that rebound, it leads to a second opportunity, and Allen having a big second half for Lynchburg, and she needed to if they were gonna have a chance here this afternoon. 11 points since the break for Shannon Allen. Timeout Randolph Macon with 4.43 to play, 69-64. The Yellow Jackets now locked in a tight ball game with Lynchburg. Well, she had Huber at the scorer's table. She was gonna get her back in the next possible situation that she could. She went ahead, called the timeout. Lynchburg College in the midst of a good run for them right now. And knocking down some three-pointers, some offensive rebounds, some stick back. They gotta get Huber back in and let her play until she fouls out now because when she's been on the floor, Randolph Macon's been 10 points better than Lynchburg. Cheney Forbush, 27 points. Allen now with 13, Hairston with 11. Parsons leading Randolph Macon with 18, Huber with 15. Anderson has 12. Those three on the floor with Vug Tavine and Barry. Parsons launching a three, will not go. Forbush with the rebound. Good job, you've got to limit Randolph Macon to one shot right now if you're Lynchburg, and that was a good start to trying to get this game even going into the last couple of minutes. Forbush, Allen, Patterson, Doris, and Goldsmith for the Hornets. Patterson wants it down low. Liverman comes out to help. Vug Tavine, beg pardon, and gets the clean block for behind. Vug Tavine, great block, led to an easy transition basket. Parsons made him pay. A little bit different when you're posting up Kaylee Patterson instead of pushing up Forbush. The lead back to seven. Goldsmith works it back out to Allen. Now Goldsmith open, tries the three, just did graze the iron. Anderson saves the rebound into Barry. The Yellow Jackets have numbers. Huber's got Vugtavine trailing, and Vugtavine scores. The lead is nine. What a game of runs we've seen this entire since about the 10 minute mark of the first half. Randolph Macon had the first big run. Lynchburg closed the half on a good run. Randolph Macon pushes it back. Lynchburg cuts it to five. And now Macon pushing it back to a near double digit lead as we enter the last three and a half minutes of play. Abby Pisek talking with her team, forced to call her penultimate timeout. Just one left for the Hornets with uh, more than three and a half minutes remaining, 73 to 64. The offensive pace certainly has accelerated down the stretch. It really has, but and Coach Pisek, you had to take that timeout. I don't care if it's your last timeout, second last, doesn't matter. If you don't stop this run right now, this game's over. So they stop this run. Don't be surprised to see them push it inside, maybe get it to four bush, she can kick it out, get Allen a good look. But you've got to do exactly what they did the last three and a half minutes of the first half, Go inside and try and chip away at this Randolph making lead. 73 to 64. Patterson at the elbow. Now Hairston for three. Just short. Rebound to Parsons. Still good offensive possession. They ran Hairston off of a down screen by Forbush. She was able to get a clean look at a three. And she is the one guard that's given them some outside shooting here this afternoon. Vug Tavine had not scored until the transition bucket. Now she's got back-to-back -back hoops. Back-to-back -back baskets, and she, she's done it by attacking the rim, whether it was in transition or that time in the half-court offense. And that's allowed Randolph Macon to get back the 11-point lead. For Bush, strong to the rim. Did she travel first? Yes, she did. She did travel, a lot of contact right there. I'm sure if you're a Lynchburg fan, you wanted the foul. If you're Randolph Macon, you agree with the call. Yellow Jackets up 11, 2.50 to play here in Salem. Winner faces fourth seed Guilford, the two-time defending champion Quakers going for three in a row. One o'clock tip in the final tomorrow. Might even see Randolph Macon shorten the game here. Now that the lead is back to double figures. Anderson got by Forbush. Katie Anderson now with 14. And she's capable of doing that. We talked about it in the early going. She wasn't the focal point of what they were trying to do. It was Parsons, it was Huber. 
But here in the second half, late first half, all through the second half, Anderson's done a good job of controlling her player, attacking the basket, and getting to the rim. And did we have a technical foul whistled after that shot? The officials conferring. Clock stopped at 2.27. Randolph making up 77 to 64. There was a whistle after the made basket for Anderson. And let's see what the ultimate decision is here. Yeah, there were about six players, three from each team, underneath the basket. Anderson was able to spin, get around Forbush and score. And then right as Lynchburg College was ready to inbound the ball, there was a whistle blown. And now we've had the group committee meeting here. And we're going to sort this out, talk to both coaches, and see what's going on. Communicating with the scores table opposite us as well. It's a 13-point Randolph-Macon lead. And it does not appear that there will be any calls after that basket. It appears it was going to be something against Lynchburg because Coach LaHaye visibly upset that there was not a foul call. I think she felt like there was a push off or a cheap shot after that layup. Give it to the officials. They got together, get the game under control, and let these players go out here and decide it this afternoon. If I'm uh, hearing things correctly, we had a double technical. Okay. Did they say I didn't see who it was on? I know uh, Harrison was matched up with somebody. We will see if we can get that sorted out. Lynchburg with another turnover. The Yellow Jackets get the ball up the floor quickly, but they want to pull it back out and sit on a 13-point lead. Smart move. Had a three-on-one fast break right there. They could have forced the issue, decided not to. And now they've run the shot clock under 10 seconds. Buck Tavine was calling for it. Had a mismatch against Doris, not able to exploit it. And the rebound deflecting out back to Lynchburg. She was doing everything she could to let her teammates know that she was wide open, jumping up and down. Unfortunately, wasn't able to knock down the shot. Charmaine Hairston and Marisha Berry picking up the technical fouls. A moment ago, another Lynchburg turnover. Too many empty possessions for the Hornets down the stretch. And right now, you've got such a veteran-laden team for Randolph-Macon. They're making smart decisions. They're not forcing the issue. They're running the shot clock under 10 seconds, just like we saw Guilford do in the first game. Run the shot clock down, get off a decent shot, hustle back, play good defense, and you should be able to close this one out. The Hornets turn it or get a turnover. Doris missing the three. Huber's got it, under 90 seconds to play. Hairston knocking the ball free, a lot of contact at midcourt. Hairston will have an uncontested layup to pull Lynchburg within 11. There's a situation there if you're Coach LaHaye. You wanted to see Huber go ahead and just get it across half court like she did on that possession there instead of just trying to pull it out. Rush it across half court, act like they're going to go towards the basket, then dribble it out. You face a whole lot less pressure that way. Setting up Bug Tavine. And we're inside a minute to go. Randolph making it ahead by 13. The Hornets with another turnover. That's their 17th of the game and their 11th here in the second half. Yeah, just six turnovers in the first half. They had 12 points off six turnovers in the first half. Be interested to see how it ends up with these 18 turnovers, 17, 18 turnovers, how many points off the turnovers that Randolph-Macon was able to accumulate here today as they approach 80 points, which you figure when you watch Randolph-Macon play that they're going to get near that number almost every night. 23 points off turnovers for Randolph-Macon to answer your question. 52 seconds away from moving on to the ODAC championship. And that's it. I mean, th this game, Abby took her last time out, trying to settle them down. Too many empty possessions, like you said. They're trying to force things. All the advantage right now goes to Randolph-Macon. You've got to play really tough defense. Doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Maybe you foul a couple of times to see if they'll miss a free throw, which they haven't done a lot here in the second half. Missed some in the first half. They corrected that in the second half. But tip your hat to Randolph-Macon. Lynchburg had seized the momentum at the end of the first half. Macon came out, reestablished their lead right at the beginning of the second half, and have been able to make Lynchburg play uphill the whole way. When you're playing from behind, lots of times you can get close, but it's a whole different ball game 
between getting within three points and actually taking the lead, they haven't been able to. Hats off to Randolph Macon. And you spend a lot more energy trying to come from behind than you do protecting the lead. Absolutely. It allowed Anderson with her fouls to sit out, Huber with her fouls to sit out. And even though Lynchburg was making a run, they weren't able to close the gap enough where Randolph Macon had to panic and put those players back in the game before Coach LaHaye was ready to. Quick foul given by Lynchburg, 79-66. Hairston is fouled out as the technical that she picked up also counts as a personal. So she will finish with 13 points, a very dynamic score. She is going to have a great career in this conference. Fantastic career. She came into the game averaging double figures, 10 points per game. Had a great first year. Coach Pizek trying to ease her into that role of a primary ball handler because you still see some freshman mistakes that she makes. She'll clean those up as she gets older, but she's a player that's capable of going out and averaging double figures her entire career. Hester makes them both. The lead is 15. Time starting to wind down on the Hornets. Allen hits another three. She now has 14 in the second half. That's all you can do. All you can do is keep shooting threes and try and foul right away. Huber knew the foul was coming, went ahead and just threw it up to the basket to see if maybe she could get lucky. So Huber to the line. Fouls on the Hornets, number 23. Fourth foul there on Andorris. 38 seconds to go. Huber three of five at the line today, close to 80% on the season. And the first one up and good. Coach LaHaye going ahead and emptying their bench. This one's over, 38 seconds left. You got a comfortable lead. Get those players out of here because we have seen things get a little chippy here in the second half. Taylor Intermill seeing her first action of the day. Ball knocked out off the Hornets, and that'll be the end of the afternoon for Taylor Huber. Last season, she was playing in the Great West Tournament for Utah Valley. Coming back home to Ashland in this season, part of the reason why Randolph Macon is returning to the ODAC Championship game in 36 seconds. Battling that foul trouble, she's had a fantastic game here this afternoon much one of the efficient games that we talk about from Huber. She's gonna take her shots. It's a matter if she has one of those efficient games where she's knocking them down at a high clip. Today was able to go out there, have a good high efficiency game for her. And so even though she had the fouls and had to sit a whole lot, had a huge game to help Randolph Macon enjoy this double digit lead. Allen's three rims out, the shot clock is off here for Randolph Macon. Another close call for Lynchburg, which lost in overtime to Easter Midnight in the semifinal round last year. Still seeking the first ODAC championship game appearance in program history. It will not come here in 2014. As the Yellow Jackets inch closer to a date with Guilford and Doris, one of the two seniors on this Lynchburg roster has fouled out with 17.5 seconds to go. Just, just too, too much offensive firepower for the Yellow Jackets here today. Lynchburg had those stretches where they turned it. They didn't have it, only had six turnovers in the first half, but they all came in one stretch that allowed Randolph Macon to jump out to that 15-0 run. And they never were able to come all the way back and recover from that initial blow that the Yellow Jackets dealt them with that 15-0 run about seven minutes into the game. Another late three for Allen, no. Forbush wants to take it back out to the perimeter. Reeves tries the three. Finally grabbed by Intermill, she can dribble out the clock. And Randolph Macon, after an off season in 2012-13, is back to familiar place, the ODAC Women's Basketball Championship game on Sunday. And they did it the way they've done it all year long. They've gotten out, the big three had their points, they were able to turn them over when they needed to, they were able to get some rebounds and some transition baskets. They used those runs that we've seen from Randolph making all year long to be able to build the lead, hold on to the lead, and then honestly, one of their better half-court defensive efforts made it tough on Lynchburg in stretches, maybe not for the whole game, but in stretches, the Randolph making defense dictated the tempo and allowed the offense to build the lead. Yeah!